All right, everyone, welcome to your statistics lecture. So I ordered some, whoop, you just slipped. I ordered some groceries and I got a mix between peaches and nectarines and I actually only ordered peaches. I like nectarines, but I ordered peaches. And I have uh, essentially two separate sample sets. So over here to my, to my left, I have some um, what I assume are peaches, they're fuzzy and stuff. And then on my right, I have what appear to be um, nectarine. So what I'm going to do is we're gonna mass out each of these. We're going to um, look at the, the average mass and do a standard deviation. And then we're gonna see if the, the masses between the two sample sets <clears throat> are statistically equivalent or not. Uh, using a student's t-test. So let's go ahead and do it. So you never want to um, mass something on a blank uh, on a blank scale. You want to make sure that you have something here to hold it. So I'm just going to go ahead and zero that dude out or do that. All right. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go through and do measure each one, mass each one out. And as I go through, I want to make sure that I have everything labeled. That tends to be something that is easily missed in any kind of experiment. So this is my first group. So what I'm gonna do, actually, let me go ahead and scooch this over. And then we should, if you move something, you should re-zero it and then remass it. Okay, so we've got sample one, sample set one, and we've got sample set two. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to uh, label the peaches. So this first one has mass of 172. You'd usually wanna put um, mass, for example, right here, and we're gonna put it in grams. So that way we have everything that we know, and over here will be our number. Um, so in sample set one, our first peach, looks like it's gonna be about one, it's going back and forth between 171 and 172. This is one of those issues. Let's see if it goes down any further. If it goes down any further, we know we're losing mass. It's probably evaporating. Ah. All right, I'd say uh, I'm gonna pick it up. I'm gonna zero it again. I'm gonna put it on, and that way we can be, every single time you wanna do the same thing. All right, we'll wait a couple seconds. It went to 172. We'll wait about that same amount of time on each of these. And you wanna be consistent like that anytime you do an analytical process. The next one, sample two, is 155. I'm actually gonna write a two on here and a one on the other one. Number three is 160, 160 grams. Number four, Woo, ooh, choose, choose 176. My dog always decides to eat when I'm lecturing. Um, number five. 163. And you can't see, but each time I move these, I'm writing a number five or something similar on it. Now, that was our first sample set. Let's move on to the next sample set. I'll keep these sample sets separate so that we don't mix them up. Number one is 250. And note that I don't have to... Um, move, uh, the, re tear the scale or anything like that each time I do this. I just add it on. Try to put it towards the center a little more. 294. They claim these are peaches. Ooh, whoa. All right, so that was exactly the same, so I'm gonna do it again. You always want to make sure if something stands out as a little bit different, um, when you're doing it is the time to recheck and ensure that that's the right value. 294. 190. For number four. Number five is 252. And I threw a number six in here. 
and 256. These appear to be relatively consistent with each other with the exception of one. So now that we've got our numbers, what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw these in a spreadsheet and I will meet you back here in a second on the computer. Okay, so here we are at Microsoft Excel. Um, the reason we're here is essentially, I'm going to be very real with you guys, and that is this. I could take my time and go through and do statistics very slowly and show you each step of the way, and I'm more than happy to do that on an alternate video. However, the truth of the matter is you are now juniors and seniors, and you are at a point where you need to start preparing for your career. And having a strong understanding of how Excel works is going to be the difference maker when you start your career. So the best thing I can do for you guys, because I care about you, is teach you Excel. All right, so without further ado, I'm just going to go ahead and start entering those numbers. So here is going to be the um, item number. Here will be our set one um, values. And here will be our set two values. Now, I'm going to right click right here. I'm going to insert an additional uh, additional row, and that's because I want to write that these are gonna be the masses in grams. So our item numbers, we have one, two, three. I could go on and on and on, or check this out. Let me go ahead and delete those. I can drag, so you move your cursor up to this little line and you drag down until it's about six, and then you wanna fill the series and that will go ahead and fill the series. So automatically I didn't have to write it. And that works really well when you have hundreds of samples, for example. All right, so our sample one was 172 grams, 155 grams, 160, 176, and 165. And this one was not applicable. I'm actually just going to leave it blank because writing letters will actually give us an issue when we do calculations. Our next set, this was 250. This is 294, 294, 190, 252, 256. All right, so we have these two sample sets. First, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to find the average mass of each of these. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit, I want this one, uh, this entire row to be my average. To get a calculation, you're going to always first hit equals. And in this particular case, I want an average or a mean. So I'm actually gonna type AVG for average, I'm going to start a parentheses, and I'm just going to highlight that thing. In fact, I can highlight all the way down if I want to go crazy, whoops, all the way down to six, and hit enter. It's going to say, do you want to do this correction? Yes, I want to do the correction. I didn't complete the parentheses, and that's what happened. So it gave me an average of 165.6. All right, if I want to find out the average for this set too, I could do the same thing, or if I want to copy what I did, I just move it over. So I just grab that and move it over. And now this is the average of this one over here. Um, so Excel is super easy and, and fun to learn. So I'm actually going to change this to average. I'm going to write mean because that's what your book uses and it's good to know. Um, and I expect you to already have an understanding of what the mean is. Now we're going to do standard deviation. In order to understand the standard deviation, essentially what it's doing is looking at the difference between the mean and what each of these individual values is, and it's dividing it by the number of values that you have. And um, it's really helpful in, in figuring out exactly uh, kind of the variability in, in your situation. And we'll talk more about standard deviation in, in another lecture. But in this case, if we wanna get standard deviation, we just hit equals STDEV, for standard deviation, start in parentheses, and highlight. Hit enter, and it'll fill it in. And now you can do the exact same thing over here just by dragging it. So what this means is that we have a mean of 165.6 with a standard deviation of about 8.6. In this particular set of set two, we have a, standard, a mean of 256 with standard deviation of 38. Um, so we already, just very quickly, determine that information without having to do a lot of calculations. All right, uh, we are going to eventually do a t-test. What a t-test is going to do is it's going to look at each of these sets, set one and set two, and it's going to determine if they're statistically different from each other. Um, you can kind of look at it and have a good idea that they are, but in a situation where, for example, if this one were, let's say, 
230 and this is 260, you might not actually know, especially because this has such a high deviation. Um, so let's go ahead and do a t-test just so you know what's, how to do it. So step number one, we're going to have to calculate the variance. And the variance is just the standard deviation squared. Um, another way to do it in your in Excel, again, you always have equals if you're doing a calculation. I'm going to use the up arrow, or I could actually just click on this one, um, because that's the one that I want to square. I want to square the standard deviation. I can do the little caret hat, and I hit 2 to bring it to the second power, and that will square it. Now I can carry that over to the right as well. Um, so now our variance here is 73, our variance here is 1459. Um, something else I need to know is eventually going to be my degrees of freedom. Before I can figure out my degrees of freedom, I want to figure out how many samples we have. So if you have a whole bunch of stuff and you didn't do this particular item number, for example, um, so I'm just going to write N, that's going to be the amount of samples that you have. Um, in our first one, we can just hit equals count. And you just highlight the amount that's there. Whoops, maybe. Equals count. Oh, there we go. Sorry, I didn't start the parentheses properly. There we go. And it says there's five. Hey, we, we knew that, but nevertheless, it's still important. And in this one, you can't drag it over. If I drag this over, it's going to say five because I only have five highlighted. Um, so if I click on this, for example, it'll show that there's only five. But that's okay. You just drag it down to have six. And now we've got six total samples. So understanding Excel and how it works is really helpful and efficient, um, or really helpful in making for an efficient calculation. All right, at this current point in time, I'm going to stop. We're going to do these calculations by hand and look at the student's T, um, and I'll come back to Excel in a little bit. Maybe if I can figure out how to stop this, how do I stop you? I'm going to hit escape. All right, bye. It doesn't work. Okay, so now we want to compare um, compare these two sets of data and see if they are in fact equivalent. So to do that, you're you're going to want to compare um, the values we get here, the student t's that ought to be here, with a essentially a, a comparison of, of the different means, of the two different means over here for the student t value. Now we'll do this area by hand um, only because it's going to get a little too messy I think to do via Excel, but I want to show you one more thing and that's that we can actually calculate uh, what the student t values should be for this particular si uh, set of data and I didn't, sorry, I didn't go over the degrees of freedom so let me go over that real quick. Okay. So the Excel actually already has student T values stored in it. So if you ever want a student T value, you don't actually have to look it up. Um, in order to get that, you're just going to hit equals T-I-N-V and then start a parentheses. And automatically it says probability and degrees of freedom. So the probability that we're looking at um, is a probability that two sets of data are equivalent. So um, if you want to have, for example, a 95% confidence interval that tells you that there's a 5% probability they're equivalent, uh, at least then you're going to want to put um, 1 minus 0.95 or 0.05. If you want it, for example, a 10% probability, I would have put 0.1, or excuse me, 90% confidence interval, I would have put 0 0.10, or even 85% confidence interval, I would put 0.15. So we're doing 1 minus that confidence interval. The most common one is the 95% confidence interval. So I'm going to do, and let me, so essentially I'm going to do 1 minus 0 0.95 in this particular uh, set of data, which would be 0 0.05. And then you're going to want to enter the degrees of freedom. Well, degrees of freedom is always going to be n minus 1. So um, for this particular situation, uh, uh, it depends on which set of data you're doing. So actually, I'm going to back up. We know that we need degrees of freedom. So let's go ahead and calculate that. Degrees of freedom is, again, just n minus 1. So I'm just going to hit equals our n and then subtract 1. And I can carry that over right on to over here. Just drag it over, and all of a sudden, we know that n minus 1 for the data set 2 is going to be 5. Another quick way to do it, again, is just hit equals. Then highlight the cell that you're interested in, and then hit minus 1 and enter, and that will give it to you as well. All right, so now again, I go equals TINV. I want 
or let me do it in the appropriate cell over here. So I'll put student T value. So I'm going to hit equals TINV, and it automatically tells you what you need. You need first the probability. Again, that's the 1 minus 0.95 or 0 0.05 if we're doing 95% confidence interval. And then the degrees of freedom, I'm just going to go ahead and highlight this one right there and hit enter. And that is the stored student T value. So um, you already have those numbers when you go to compare them uh, later on. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and pause this and I will meet you back on paper. Okay, so now we're going to determine whether or not these two sets of data are different or maybe statistically the same. Um, so let's go ahead and, and calculate t calculate it. That's the value that you're going to compare to the t table, um, which I gave you a couple values here and here for degrees of freedom of four and five. You could do the same thing to find out degrees of freedom for six, seven, eight, nine, ten, etc. All right, so our t calculated. And this is a common equation is going to be equal to uh, the mean of one minus the mean of two and take the absolute value of that divided by the square root of um, the variance of one or the standard deviation of one squared divided by n one plus the standard deviation of the second one squared divided by the amount of things in that sample. Sorry, I should have shown you that a little better. Um, all right, so this is just a standard equation that you're going to um, want to use. So let's go ahead and calculate each one. Our, we'll go ahead and call this one and this one two, since we already have them labeled as such. So our first mean is 165.6. And then we'll subtract 256 from that and we'll take the absolute value. Then we'll be dividing that by the square root of our variance, or S1 squared, if you remember that was just all we did was square it, so 73.3 divided by our N, which was 5, plus our variance over here, which is 1459.2, and we'll divide that one by 6. So let's go ahead and do this calculation. You can do it with me if you want to, just so it sticks in your head a little more. I'm actually going to piece it out because I have a very basic calculator. So in the first one, I'm going to end up with 90.4 divided by the square root. 73.3. And if I add those two, I get 257.86. If I take the square root of that, I get 90.4 divided by 16.06. And here I get an answer of 5.6. Three. So I actually already know um, that these two are statistically different, but let's go ahead and, and talk about why. Um, we're going to want to look at a table for particular degrees of freedom. Because this one had five and this one had six, oftentimes they have um, the same. You can actually calculate a specific degrees of freedom. And, and let's go ahead and do that for this particular case. You end up rounding anyways, but the degrees of freedom... When you're comparing two sets of data that have different um, different n numbers, is going to be the following. It's going to be equal to the variance of one divided by the n of one plus the variance of the second one divided by the n of the second one. All divided by the 
variance of 1 divided by n of 1 all over the degrees of freedom of that first one, which would be n1 minus 1, plus, and the denominator here, s2 squared, or the variance of the second one, divided by the n of the second one. And I'm sorry, I meant to square this one over here. This whole thing is going to be squared. Divided by the degrees of freedom for the second one. All right, so I'm going to pause this, I'm going to calculate this, and I'll come right back to you. Okay, so I wanted to save you some time there. Um, essentially, I just filled everything in. Um, we've already kind of talked about it. In fact, we even already calculated the 257.86 up here. And just square it and then divide it by this quantity right here, which I filled in right there. So if you want to pause it and make sure that you understand what happened, you can go ahead and do that. Um, I suggest doing this calculation only because it's easy to mess up. There's lots of little squares, etc., and it's good to have a good idea of what's going on. All right, this takes me to an answer of about 5.59. There is no student t value for 5.59. However, there is one for 6, so you're going to want to round to the nearest whole number. All right, so if we look at our book for student t values, or we actually already calculated it on the Excel sheet. If you look at six, and you want to go for the 95% confidence interval, it's going to be 2.447. Um, depending on the confidence interval you do, you're going to use um, that particular set of um, T value. Okay, so in the book, 95% confidence interval for six was actually, oh, actually we didn't do it. It was 2.447. We did it for a few others. So this is for our student T value degrees of freedom equals six at a 95% confidence interval. So all that to say, this was our T calculated. Let me write it down here. Our T calculated from the very first thing we did was 5.63. Our T table was 2.44. Seven. And if our t calculated is greater than our t table, then they are statistically different. If the opposite had been true, then there'd be at least a 5% confidence, 5% uh, uh, probability that they are exactly the same. And so um, this is what the t-test is used for. This will tell us that the two sets of data are in fact quite different. Let me give you an example of when you might use this. Um, if, for example, you're, uh, you have a scale, two different scales, and you and a colleague are both measuring things or massing things out, and you get two um, sets of data, they look kind of similar, but you're not sure if they're exactly the same, you can compare them that way really quickly and determine if they are in fact statistically the same or different. Um, there are many times when you could use this, and I hope that you try this using Excel. I think I have a homework question that actually makes you use a little bit of Excel here, and that will get you a little more comfortable and ready for the real world, y'all. Waha! All right, have a great day.